All right, so we're here for another episode of the Throws Show. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm here with my co-host, Trevor Stutzman, three-time NCAA All-American. Trevor, thanks for being here. No problem. <laughs> I love that three-time All-American that I was just throwing in somebody's face about 10 minutes ago before we did this <laughs> podcast. Um, so right now, we're sort of in this in the thick of post-collegiate training at Garage Strength and at Throws U. Um Rachel and Mo had a really good training session together on Sunday this past week. Noah was here. Uh, Josh Sorochin throwing well. Alex is Alex Rose is dropping some big bombs. Um, he's going to have a meet next week in Grand Valley. So if you're in Michigan, he's having a meet. He's hosting a meet to try and get a decent throw out uh, early this year. And Sam Mattis looks incredible. If you guys are paying attention on our Instagram account, you'll notice um, a couple of recent – uh, an analysis of him and he just I just analyzed his uh, one of his two 5k throws the last one I posted I think that that might be one of the best throws of Sam's life so I just want to give a little bit of an update Trevor you give me an update of how the high school throwers are going how the high school throws are going I know Keely looks really good I know yeah. I, I watched that video of Maria she looks really good mm -hmm. um, you know give us a little bit of insight on that before we dive into these questions yeah um, basically, yeah, I mean, Keely's back from her visit. She's been getting back kind of into the swing of technique. It's crazy, like, how she, you know, through, throughout the summer, we've been, like, building her technique. Then she took, you know, kind of off and on training while she's doing her visits. Um, she is, like, like the, first... the, the best high school, returning high school female shot putter, so, yeah. in the country. Yeah. And she, kind of the first couple days back, they were a little rough but she jumped right back to where she was at the end of the summer, like really quickly. So it's, it's just interesting to see how like you can build your technique over a period of three months, take a little time off. It'll be a little rough, but you'll get right back to where you were pretty quickly. Right. Um, but then other than Keely, we have uh, Maria Diaz. Um, she's getting ridiculously strong. Just yeah. front squatted like five minutes ago, 95 for five 95 kilos that's 95 kilos yeah that's around like 205 <laughs> pounds for five reps yeah um then we've stupid. got that's really good adria redder um she her technique's really been coming along she's been slaying the the one five um actually both of them are have a meet on sunday they're going to go okay. to at uh, christian brothers academy oh yeah yeah that's good um, cba if you're in jersey go to that christian brothers yeah, academy always meet. A good meet yeah right there um and I mean, Annika, Jeff, they're, you know, just cranking through technical changes right now. So that's good. Um, yeah, it's all going well. Okay. So, so riding off of what you're saying with Keely, I'm interested to see what your answer is to this, uh, specifically because it's, it's a question that we get a lot on the AMAs on, on throws you on Instagram. I actually get it a lot when we do AMAs on, on garage strength and it's, how often should I be PRing? How often should I hit a personal best? And I think this is in regards to training and as, and as well uh, in regards to uh, competition. And I think that especially high school and the college level, some people get so frustrated because they think they should be PRing every meet or every other meet. And I wanted to just, you know, walk us into the, the high school realm and then I can sort of chip in a little bit with the collegiate. You can uh, put in the collegiate world as well, especially because you're coaching there. Um, and then we can, you know, move on from that point. Yeah. Um, so first of all, I would say the one thing, especially in practice at this point of the season, a lot of people want to compare what they're throwing to their PRs. And I think that's a huge mistake. It's going to make you depressed because you're probably not going to be throwing your PR yeah. <laughs> at this point. But one thing that is good that you can do, and this is why it's good to be measuring throws during practice and to log your measured throws. Right. Because if you logged your throws last year, you can look back, say, October, middle of October last year, what was I throwing? And chances are you're going to be throwing further at this point in the year than you were in that point of the year. So that's a good way to just kind of measure your progress, make yourself feel good. Okay, I'm getting better. And I don't need to think like I'm trying to PR every single practice. But with that said... You're saying like over the course of the year, how many times should you PR? Or yeah, is, is it general, general, just like in general expectation? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Probably like 
two to three times. Yeah, like I'd big say. PRs. Yeah. yeah, like not not PRs where you just start <laughs> chipping away. Maybe you throw the six k six inches further in training, but like yeah. those days where you're just like boom, and all of a sudden it lights up three three feet further. You know, something like that. A meter. Yeah. You know, some crazy more. Yeah. So like practice PRs. I think both. A little bit of both. If it's practice PRs, I'd say like three or four times a year meet PRs. Like big PRs like that, I'd say, you know, I think you're doing well if you get like two yeah. of those. Yeah. You know, and maybe maybe if they're like little PRs, like, you know, three or four. That so this this actually leads us into the next question. I wanna and I'll I'll go back and forth here, is that the next question we got was how often should we be measuring throws? And I think mm, that yeah. that one thing that we do really well, and, and especially with the post collegiate group and the collegiate group is that You've got to think that as you age, as you age in training. So you know, let's say you're 22 years old, but you've only been training for four since you're 18. So now your your training age is four years. So it's important to remember that when you have that younger training age, you you know you can see that you're going to PR a little bit more frequently, right? But as you adapt and as your body creates uh, defense mechanisms, which is an adaptation to the training stimulus, the longer you you train, the less more infrequent those prs might get and and so what 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 ends up being sort of like the baseline of our training system is that if we can vary the stimulus if we can vary the stimulus in the weight room but also vary the stimulus in the in the circle with different weighted implements we can sort of sit there and say okay you know this this program is a 6k shot this program is an 8k shot this this program is a 10k shot. The next program's a, a 8k shot with a with a four or with a 5k shot. So then you're having all these different stimuli, stimuli thrown at you. So you make defense mechanisms differently, and you can you can create a little bit more of a of a steady. You might hit smaller PR, smaller PRs, and then when you go back to you know that original weight, what that competition weight, you might get that big result. But it might be four or five months yeah. of programming. And I think, yeah. you know, especially if we keep keep in mind that measuring is an important tool. Measuring to throwing is just like knowing the weights on the bar for bench press. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest misconception in the throwing world in the United States, especially is that nobody wants to measure their throws, but then they can't measure their, their, their they see where it's at and they, they have an idea. But if you can look at it as that's our direct feedback, that's the, the yeah. best feedback that we can get is where's the distance at and then where's where's the technique at and then you can mm-hmm. sort of see and and analyzing and logging all this stuff helps us make make that progress especially as coaches yeah because then you can see when the adaptations occur so um i think that covers you know how often should we be measuring in practice and i, I actually i had this long talk with mo yesterday um <laughs> she's like you really want me to measure every day and i was like mo Yes, just give me an an idea. Like, you know where 18 meters is. You know where 17 meters is. And she's like, oh, you're the worst. I'm like, yeah, but dude, if if we do this now in two months, you're going to be so happy we did that because – you're gonna see that progress. You're not gonna. Right. You're not gonna think it's there. You're gonna know it's there because you're gonna look back at your log in October, and then you know next year when we're prepping for 2020, you're gonna look back and say, okay, last year at this time I was at this this mm-hmm. you know this distance. So, and I think I think for, so I think it kind of goes as you get more into throwing, as you get better, as you get more elite, the frequency of of measuring should go up because I think for for like kids just starting out like first of all it could be some random yeah it's usually you know there's so many inconsistencies with their throws that Mm -hmm. you know measuring you know and you're not really going to get that true of an account because there's just so many variables going on um but as you start getting you know more consistent with your throws you know it's not big huge valleys and peaks all the time like just to kind of hone in on like the day-to-day um, you know, feeling and how your body's feeling and, you know, and track tracking that over a period of time can be more helpful. I think as you get more. Absolutely. Leader. Yeah. All right. So we, if we go into, we got two more questions before we get into the benchmark lift. So the benchmark lift question is a question that we got four times yesterday on our AMA, just on throws university. We got twice today on garage strength where it's what are those benchmark numbers that we have to hit in the weight room to throw 50 feet as a woman, 160 feet in the discus or 60 feet and 180 feet in the in the men's shot. So we can go over those. But first, 
Is it worth training in crappy weather? And I want to bring this up because today, you know, it was super windy. We've had videos where it's, we're training in the pouring down rain. We just posted on Throws You the, the image of Lucas throwing in the snow. And it's like, is that worth it? What do you say, Trevor? Yes, 100%. <laughs> yeah. I, so I still remember this. And I'm holding this against oh, you. Oh, jeez. When... <laughs> I think I have like five things in my mind. And I know the first one you're going to say is when I was in the garage. <laughs> yes. This is when I was in, I was like a junior in, in high school. I was like just going to this crazy guy to train with him. He seemed cool. So I was like, all right, we'll keep, we'll keep, I'll keep training here. But um, he, he had us take like 30 rock throws at the end of every practice. And I remember this one day specifically, me and Evan Hayes were out in this sand pit, chucking rocks, it's pouring down rain. And I remember seeing Dane poke his head out of the window and like start yelling like cues at us. <laughs> it's more in the pouring down rain, taking the tosses with the rock. Oh, but geez. anyways, yeah. I think, I mean, first of all, like training in the rain, it makes you, it makes you tough and it makes you feel tough. Yeah, yeah, Like it, yeah. it does both. It's like, like a rocky, yeah, exactly. rocky effect. Yeah, yeah, um, And I think both are important, but also, I mean, you're going to compete in, in rain. Right. You're going to compete in pouring down rain. You're going to yeah. compete in the cold. Like, I think it, that was one thing. It's stupid to, to, to not be prepared for that. Right. And, and, and yeah, like you're going to take, like probably you're not going to have as good of a technical session. You're not going to be. And you've got you've to be prepared for that. You've got to yeah, think right. there's, there's certain changes you've got to do to your technique to deal with wet weather, to, to, right. to deal with the cold weather. Mm -hmm. And, and I, that, that brings up uh, Peyton, you know, her junior year. So. She always had this issue where she hated throwing in the rain because she would slip off of her left. Her left foot would always slip. And I'd always be like, you know, constantly throwing in the rain. And it was one of those things where um, she would complain about it. But she, I mean, not really because she never complained. But she would she, like I would try and show her in practice like, look, you're throwing well in the rain, knowing that there might be a chance that she's going to compete at States mm -hmm. in the rain. Mm -hmm. And what happened her junior year, she – Threw in the rain and she PR'd in the rain, but that yeah. preparation is what got her ready. And I think even, you know, looking back at last year's meet that we had at throws the throws you camp here, where it was the throw in the snow, um, we're having that again New Year's Eve, uh, and Lucas threw like eighteen eighty or eighteen seventy, and yeah. it was it was like ten degrees, yeah. Yeah. dude. It was so cold, and it's like. Dude, if you can throw that well in that kind of weather, mm -hmm. you can do that in any weather, yeah, anywhere, absolutely. and you're always going to yeah. be ready for it. And if you look at the World Championships in 2017, there's a picture of Daniil Thomas Dodd throwing, and mm -hmm. she has – there's water coming out of the circle, and they didn't stop the comp. And so that's the thing we got to remember is that a lot of these competitions, they take place in terrible weather. So if you want to become a champion, you've got to prepare for stuff like yeah. that. And the biggest thing with that is there's no excuse to have the disc flop out of your hand in the rain. Like, get towels. Get 10 towels. Have 10 Sam's towels. Sam's going to be pissed at you for this. Hold the towel. Hold the disc under the towel. 2016 trials. Get in the circle. Get your grip under the towel. Yeah. Throw the towel off and throw right away. Like, yeah. there's a way to do it. People can do it. it. You got to figure out how it works for you. And, There's no excuse. And to, to to ride on top of that, Trevor, I would just like to point out that in the 2016 Olympic trials in discus, you know, I had two guys in the in the competition, and it was absolutely pouring down rain. Mm -hmm. And I remember standing there thinking when Sam was throwing, because you know he had like three towels, and I remember panicking, thinking like, dude, I failed him. I failed him as his coach because. I should have had 25 towels yeah. and all his towels, they were, we only had three. Yeah, already already, so they yeah. were already wet. Cause mm -hmm. it was so, it was pouring so much. And you know, I, I think he threw like 57 meters on his last throw and he was ninth place. He didn't make the final, <laughs> but it all goes back to just, you know, had he trained a little bit more in, in the weather, in that, that weather situation, maybe he would have thrown better, maybe not. But at the same time, I should have been as the coach more prepared and I should have brought, I should have stolen 50 towels from the hotel and just be, hey, we're, we've got this on the line, yeah. you know. So, yeah, right. so always remember that these big time competitions, the Olympic trials, last year's NCAAs mm -hmm. in uh, in Oregon, and and the World Championships in England, they have those meets with terrible weather, and you've got to keep that in the back of your mind. Yeah. Um, so if we move on, if are there any questions, Jason? Uh, Maria wanted to join the live chat. But she <laughs> wanted to see if she could join in. Oh, is that Maria that came in? That was Maria, but she also came in and wanted to join the live. Okay. 
<laughs> Sorry. Next Maria. time we'll bring her. Yeah, uh, we'll bring her in. Okay, so I wanted to go over if we could go over the high school benchmarks for men and women and men throwing 60 feet or 180 feet the discus. And I don't think if, if we can get it to be clear that if you don't hit these numbers, you can still throw further than these distances. Yeah. And Jacob Lemon's a really good example of this. And if you hit these numbers, it's not a guarantee that you're going to throw that far. Yeah, right. So this is specific towards 50-foot shot putters with women, which is a significant throw in the shot, and 160 feet in the discus. And then for the boys, it's 180 feet in the discus and then 60 feet in the shot. And so I tried to take uh, Payton, Keeley, Maria, Briley, um, along with that with Rachel, Mo, um, you know, Sam, knowing, having a good idea with where Sam was in high school, Jason, uh, myself, you, um, I tried to factor in a whole bunch of different people, different body mm -hmm. types. Cause that's the other thing is that some of these numbers are going to be a little bit skewed one way because of a body type and then maybe skewed another for another individual because of, of a specific body type. So I wanted to lay out in our system, it's basically going to be based or it'll be based around bench press, snatch, clean squat or back squat. Um, do you want me to go? Yeah, go get for it. Okay. So, so what I did is I, I said for girls, I think, um, and I think Keely's going to disprove this, but I, I think right. to throw 50 feet, if you could bench press between as a, as a woman, you know, 210 to 225 pounds, I think that is going to get you that, that strength to, to hit a big throw at 50 mm -hmm. feet. I think with, with, with women too, since the, the, the shot, the implements really light. Like I think there can be more variability. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And if especially really good especially speed. depending on body type because right. they're they're the girls who are just like, you know, ridiculously strong and they throw far, but then, you know, it's it's easy to be you know, on the weaker side but just be ridiculously explosive. explosive and, yeah. and that makes yeah. up for no, it. That's you know? true. Uh so for snatch I have seventy to eighty kilos, which would be about hundred and fifty five pounds to a hundred and uh sixty five pounds. 166 pounds. Um, and that might be a little high. I base that almost entirely off of the fact that Payton snatched 83 kilos. Um, mm -hmm. But again, K, uh, Payton's techni technique in the weight in the weightlifting realm is was very solid. What would you say for like a power snatch? Because that's something that more people do. Yeah. So for a power snatch, I would say 55 to 60 kilos. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think, and I think Keely could do that. Mm -hmm. I definitely think Keely. I think Maria could do that. I think clean uh, between 90 and 105 kilos. Uh, and any clean over 90 kilos, any clean over 200 pounds for a high school girl is a significant clean. That's mm -hmm. very, very good. Um, and some people might be sitting there thinking, like, these numbers are outrageous. But. If you're well trained, you can clean any. Uh, most athletic girls could clean 200 pounds. I've got, I've had over 13 girls in high school clean uh, 200 pounds, and these are girls that are 120 pounds. Yeah. So it is feasible. Um, I don't know if you have. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I I would agree with that, and I mean a lot of it too. Like you said, like they seem outrageous, but remember that most there are a lot of really good female high school throwers out there. Who don't spend a lot of time in the weight room too right, right so like that's just something to keep in mind of how much you can make up if you train if you lift like four days a week too. yeah absolutely and, and doing that consistently through the off season like that's how you get to those big numbers and then um <clears throat> and i want to throw in this in Alyssa wilson who arguably is the best high school female ever in the united states was stupid strong yeah. um power lifting trained I also taught her how to snatch. Um, not that I'm, I'm actually, yeah, I'm solely responsible for her success because she learned how to snatch in one session for me. <laughs> no, but she's stupid, stupid strong when she was in high school. I think that that's important that those to, to, to recognize that. But if we talk about back squat, I put down 130 to 140 kilos and ideally it would be ass to grass hmm. or butt to grass if we were Trevor. Um, <laughs> I think having a squat around 300 pounds is, would be ideal. I mean, Maria is going to blow that up. I mean, Maria could probably front squat that possibly yeah, probably. soon. Um, so on the boys' side, I put a bench press of between 315 to 350 pounds, uh, snatching 220 pounds to 260 pounds. So there's a big variable there. 
uh, cleaning around 310 to 330 pounds, and then back squatting 440 pounds, which I think those are very reasonable yeah, numbers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and those numbers will be a little bit lower, again, for the for the boys because they're it's a lighter implement. Um, for co- college and post-collegiate, I put the benchmarks me- being – Men that have thrown 19 meters or 60 meters. And I sort of use a lot of the athletes that we've worked with over the years um, and where they're at. So bench press between 200 and 220 kilos. So that would be 440 to 484 pounds. A snatch of 130 to 140 kilos. And I think that that number, the snatch number could be a little bit higher. Because I think that if if your snatch number is a little bit higher... Your clean doesn't have to be as high. Your squats don't have to be as high. And your bench doesn't have to be as high. I want to throw that in there. So 130 to 140 kilos is around 286 pounds to 310 pounds. And then a clean of 170 to 190 kilos. So anywhere from 375 to 430. Um, And then a front squat of 210 to 220. And I I want to throw this in there that Garrett Cantor front squatted 240 for a triple, I think it was. Which is 530 pounds for a triple. That's stupid. That's yeah. So think about that. And then back squat uh, around 230 to 270 kilos. So 270 kilos is 600 pounds. Uh, last year, Sam back squatted 272 Astagrass. And he's front squatted 200, I think, for a triple. Um, and he's cleaned 187 kilos. And he snatched 143 kilos. And he's bench pressed uh, just shy of 500 pounds, so like 220. So I think those numbers are pretty reasonable. Yeah. For for women, the benchmark number was 18 meters and 55 meters. And I put down 140 to 150K bench. So anywhere from a 300-pound to a 330-pound bench press for the women. And then a snatch of 80 to 100 kilos. So um, you know anywhere from 175 pounds all the way up to 220-pound snatch. And then... A clean of 110 to 120 kilos, and I want to point out, you know, someone like Maggie Guin, who people don't really associate as being this physically super, super strong woman. You know, she's cleaned 120 kilos. I think it's 124 kilos, which is 275 pounds. So she's got some serious strength to be able to do that and to be able to absorb that force. Uh, front squat of 140 kilos plus, so about 310 pounds, and then back squat hovering up around 400 pounds. Um, I remember seeing a video of Raven Saunders doing bounce benches with three 315 yeah. with a bounce pad, but still That's significant three, strength. Yeah. So <laughs> my whole argument would be that, you know, getting strong in the weight room is valuable. And if you're throwing a lot and you're getting really strong and you're doing some special uh, strength work, you can't really go wrong. Right. Uh, as long as you have decent technique, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think you covered all those numbers pretty well. All right. Do you have any <laughs> any any other questions there, Jason? Yeah. So, uh, uh, I think he's a high school guy. Uh, he says, "I'm a junior in high school, and those numbers are scaring me." I would say buy a program from Throws University, yeah. and in 12 months you will hit those numbers, <clears throat> as long as you're relatively athletic, and you work hard and you follow the program. And do follow the program. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so go to ThrowsUniversity.com right now. And Click buy, and now you will be <laughs> on your road to becoming a champion. There we go. That's our shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> I got to pay the bills. I got twins coming, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, Jason? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so this is just this is from Facebook. I think this is in relation to Sam or just bench presses in general. Uh, were the benches like, is that benching off a of foam, or is that... Just regular. Sam's the chest. Sam's done both. Actually, Sam's best bench last year was without foam. Uh, with foam, he could consistently hit a two hundred, like two hundred, uh, two hundred kilos for like triples. But without foam, he's hit two twenty. So I, right now on his training program, his shoulders tweaked. His left shoulder is a little uh, tweaked right now. And what we do is is he's he's got an incline bench. And then we have a speed bench at the on the on day f- on day five, where he does five sets of five with three fifteen, and every set is as fast as he can get it. So it's basically like take it off the rack, get set, pack those shoulders, and it's just boom, boom, like as quick as he can do it. So I think that that 
needs to be factored in, especially when you start getting to that that long, long older training age is that you've got to really stimulate the nervous system in more ways than just throwing more weight on the bar. You've got to figure out other avenues to, to get an adaptation out of the body. So we got one more question uh, from Instagram. I think you guys get this a lot, but this is like, do you kind of have any numbers in relation to hammer throwers? Uh, we just got these. Yeah, we just got a lot the other day. I would say I remember talking with Dr. B about Yuri Sadiq, and uh, he, at the time, he always tells us, he had told this story quite frequently where he didn't want Yuri to clean more than 150 kilos. It was like 150 or 160 kilos. And typically, Yuri wouldn't clean more than 130 to 140 kilos in training. So he would hover right around 300 pounds. And they were doing a clinic in the United States, and everybody was like, well, what's his best clean? What's his best clean? And Dr. B actually let him go to a, a max, and he cleaned like 175 kilos. It was just, it was just shy of 400 pounds. So I think that if, if you can sit there, and his big thing was always that to be a world-class thrower, you have to. You absolutely have to be able to snatch your body weight with ease. And he would say that about everybody. Yuri Tam was 310 pounds. He's like, he had to snatch that for like a triple to be able to transfer that into, into his throws. And Yuri Tam was just this huge Estonian monster, right? So apparently a big drunk. But if you think about um, that regard, you know, so Yuri Sadiq was a smaller guy, 105 kilos. He could snatch 105 kilos all day. So... From from the hammer throw perspective, if you factor in Yuri Tam and, and Litvinov and Nikulin and, and Sadiq, um, these were all guys that could easily snatch body weight, easily. So so that's like that first step to becoming that elite thrower. And then on top of that, just in, increasing um, more in the snatch realm and a little bit more in the clean realm as well. So uh, one thing I do I do want to point out is that he was a big fan of, of close grip snatches too. So... Um, a lot of like, you know, a hundred K to 105 K close grip snatches for, for hammer throwers were, was not uncommon. It was very, very common in, in his training system, um, back in the eighties. So I don't know if that helps, but I would typically say from, from my perspective now, I would agree with most of that. And I would say front squats, front squats, and a lot of cleans, a lot of power cleans, a lot of snatches from different positions and a lot of various, uh, grips with the snatches. So I think uh, Maria is adding back to my conversation. This, I think, could be next, week, next week's conversation for an entire episode is we really covered the physical today, but what does it take to build yourself mentally? Like, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be really good. good question. And, yeah. uh, and, of course, the classic, any drills? Any drills. <laughs> that could be its own episode. Look at yeah. the throws you story. Put yeah. one up there today. Yeah. Okay. So... This is my favorite part of doing podcasts. I'm going to ask Trevor seven questions. Seven. And we should time this. But I'm, I wanna, I'm hoping that it's like a, a minute long. I'm going to give him two options. Wait, the whole, all seven questions in a minute. Yeah, so it's like a speed round. <clears throat> all right. And, and Jason, you know what I was thinking is, is when, you're, when you're editing the video, you should put like little graphics around Trevor's head that like pop up when we ask these questions and it's like, like this the actual questions? Yeah. Like it's like this cool like fire round or something stupid. We should come up with some weird corny tag name so every time we do it we can be like, Okay, it's the red hot minute. Okay, so first question is this is and this is to men's collegiate or post collegiate shot. You get one choice. 20 pounder, 16 pounder, or 14 pound shot. And you can only train with one of them for the rest of your career. 16. Oh! Boo! <laughs> you wanted to say the 20. Yeah! <laughs> I thought you were going to say 14. This is, this this is, is the rest of your career, though. Yeah. Like, Yo, this is to a T. What Jason was talking about on Saturday, he's like, you know what I like about you and Trevor? You guys know that you don't agree on stuff, but you deal with it. And you're just like, well, you, it, it is funny. I, I know exactly when we're going to disagree and exactly what you would say. <laughs> yeah. you, you knew exactly that I'd say in 20. Okay, second, second choice. You get one drill to pick for the rest of the athlete's career. Half turn or standing throw? Standing throw. Oh, really? Okay. That's interesting. I didn't think you would pick that. 
I just think it's more it's more practical. Okay. I mean, like if you're never gonna do e either never do standing throws or never do half turns. Yeah. I'd rather do standing throws. Okay. Number three. This is in regard to special strength training of a shot putter of any level. Dumbbell throws or side med ball throws. Shot putter. Yeah. Dumbbell throws. Discus thrower. Side med ball. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. Milk or soda? Milk. <laughs> please, <laughs> please. <laughs> wait, wait, you're going to like this one, Coon. Number five, ice cream or green bean casserole? <laughs> there we go. Uh, sorry, Mom, ice cream. <laughs> so I got to end on, because this question just popped up. Come on, I got two more, but you, uh, we'll you do it. two more? No, no you, what's, what, what's that question? What do you guys think of Reese Hoppe's comeback, supposedly for 2020? No way. It's about on Instagram today. No way. I, I'm 100% back in that. <laughs> Dude, that'd be awesome. Dude, that'd Let's be awesome. It. Let's go. <laughs> really? Supposedly, this, is, this question just came in like a minute ago. I'm like, I have to get this in. Dude, that's awesome. Yes. I, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. When, when I was at the 2016 trials, I kept saying, I was watching with Kalnis, and I kept saying to Kalnis, if there's one person who could hit a big throw and shock everybody that was at the top at that time. And at the time, Kovacs was not in a good spot. He didn't have a good throw, I think, until the fifth round. I think he threw 22 or 2190 in like the fifth round. Up until that point, he was sort of teetering back and forth with Whiting. And I, in my mind, I remember thinking, like, Whiting could pop, could pop past him. And Hoffa was the one that I was like, Hoffa could catch one. Hoffa could catch one. And he didn't catch one. So if he comes back, I'm, dude, I'm like the biggest Reese Hoffa fan. So I would love to see that. Two Going more. back. Snatch or clean? Snatch. Bench or push press? Bench. Okay. So that's it. <laughs> so tune in next week for another episode of The Throw Show. Ooh.